you're a non-American on the internet, chances are that you've heard of a few states other than the ones everyone knows about, such as Texas, California, Florida. And one of those states is none other than little old Alabama, which, more often than not, is mentioned in jokes and memes about familial sexual relations. And although Alabama does not, in fact, have the highest rate of incest, or at least I couldn't find any statistics relating to that, it still does not rank very well or ranks among the worst in the country in terms of other important qualities. For example, obesity, quality of infrastructure, adult smoking, child smoking, poverty, quality of public education, outbreaks of hookworm, and deadly tornado risks. However, Alabamans and Alabamians, there is one thing that y'all can rejoice at, as Alabama is the most biodiverse state in the continental US, or maybe even in the entire US. For example, one river in Alabama, the Cahaba River, has 131 species of freshwater fish. That is more species of freshwater fish than the entire state of California. And that's just the tip of the metaphorical iceberg. Alabama ranks first in the country for a number of species of freshwater fish, turtles, carnivorous plants, freshwater mussels, freshwater snails, slugs, and species of crayfish. So now a question that some of y'all might be asking. Why is Alabama so goddamn biodiverse? So first we have to look at latitude. Birmingham, for example, is at the same latitude as Tripoli in Libya, and Mobile, or Mobile, I don't know how to pronounce it, is at the same latitude as Quetta in the Baluchistan region of Pakistan. However, unlike the examples that I gave, Alabama is not a desert. This is because of the influence of the Gulf of Mexico, which funnels westward winds upward towards the Gulf Coast of the United States. And these winds bring a lot of rain. And the combination of both rain and heat on the Gulf Coast of Alabama leads to a lot of biodiversity. In addition to bordering the Gulf of Mexico, the northern part of Alabama lies at the southern terminus of the Appalachian Range. This abundance of hills and mountains create a huge number of geologic regions that further Alabama's biodiversity. For example, this is a map of the geological regions of Alabama. I don't know what it means, but there's definitely a lot of something here. And as well as the Appalachians creating different ecosystems for different things to grow in Alabama, they also create numerous cave systems, which leads to Alabama having the third largest number of cave dwelling species out of any temperate ecosystem in the world. Here are some cool Alabama animals. Sturgeons are fish that are probably one of the best examples of a living fossil with sturgeon fossils dating back as far as the late Cretaceous. There are three species of sturgeon known to exist in Alabama. To be specific, the Atlantic, Shovelnose, and Alabama sturgeons. The latter of which, as you may guess from its name, is completely native to Alabama, occupying the Alabama River and its tributaries. Sturgeons are close relatives of paddlefish, named as such because of their large schnoz filled with electroreceptors that it uses to detect zooplankton, which it eats. It's named as such because the schnoz clearly resembles a paddle. Alabama still has a number of unique fauna that are not, in fact, fish, such as the Cahaba water lily, a water lily which was named after the aforementioned Cahaba River, as well as the Alabama beach mouse, native to the beaches of Alabama. Interestingly enough, a significant part of Alabama's political landscape is actually derived from its geological landscape. Here's that map of geological regions of Alabama I showed earlier. Notice the large green belt down the middle of Alabama. Now here is a map of Democratic versus Republican votes by county in Alabama. Notice something similar, specifically the blue belt down the middle of Alabama. Fast forward to the 1600s, and that topsoil happened to be perfect for growing cotton. So millions of West African slaves were transported to that region of the Deep South where many of them remain today, even after the Great Migration. As such, Alabama's Blue Belt is more commonly known as the Black Belt due to its majority black population, which is far more likely to vote Democratic than Republican. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video on Alabama's biodiversity and geology. I will be making more videos similar to this in the future as well as some other stuff. Thank you for watching.